Hi friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shomos Biology and in this video lecture we will be talking about tumor suppressor genes. In the last video exactly we have talked about the proto-oncogenes and oncogenes and that is what we learned from there that proto-oncogenes are specific genes present in our body. The function of that gene is to help the cell to grow and divide and differentiate as well as proliferate. Now, if there is any sort of mutation in the proto-oncogenes due to any sort of uh, process like viral infections or deletion or duplication of that gene or trans, uh, like uh, chromosomal translocation, that proto-oncogene can, can be converted into an oncogene. Now, once they have converted oncogene, that means the proto-oncogene's functionality is now enhanced. So, they keep on telling the cell to divide and as a result of that cell will keep growing and dividing and proliferating that will lead to the generation of cancer. That is the idea of the proto-oncogenes and oncogenes. Now besides proto-oncogenes, you know proto-oncogenes are those genes, you know I told you like there are two different pathways in our body always going on. One pathway that promotes life, one pathway promotes death. The pathway that promotes life it belongs to all those factors like, like these growth factors, growth factor receptors, signaling mediators, transcription factors and all these things involve in that pathway so that it, they keep ensuring that the cell will grow and divide and so the, so the organisms keep living. Now that most of the pathways are like that. But there are some other pathways as well that is known as apoptosis or cell death pathways. Now those cell death pathways means that when the cell is out of control or let us say when the cell loses its all capability of growing and dividing and it reaches its age, cell death pathway tells the cell to grow, go and ultimately die. So it will produce some factors, some hydrolyzing enzymes that will break down DNA and protein components as a result ultimately cell uh, death happens. Now, those these two pathway crosstalk between themselves and there are some molecules some factors some proteins that helps regulating whether the cell will follow the living pathway or the cell will follow the death pathway those mediators or those regulatory pro proteins are, are known as the tumor suppressor proteins and the gene that encodes those proteins are known as tumor suppressor genes that is what we are talking about today Tumor suppressor gene, the, the name if you look, this gene suppresses the development and growth of tumor. So, it will not allow the cell to grow and divide rapidly. It will halt the division of the cell. It will halt the proliferation of the cell. It will seize it. That is the functionality of tumor suppressor gene. It is regulating the cell cycle pathways. It is regulating the cell proliferative pathways. Now, you can, if, if I give you an analogy, you can take it with the brake paddle of a car. Now, if you are driving a car, you know, uh, driving a car is like uh, very analogous to the cell to grow and divide. So, cell is growing, you are driving a car with a fast speed. Now, you see a speed brake, you need to push the car slow so that no accidents happen. Now, what happens for that reason, you need to have a strong brake paddle in your car. Now, if you, if you do not have the brake paddle, you cannot control the, the speed of the car and it, it, you will hit people and ultimately it will cause accident. An accident here is cancer. So, you do not want that. What you want is you want to go, you want to go slow but in a controlled fashion so that whenever you want, you can put the leg in the brake paddle and it can slow your car. That is the idea here. That brake paddle is the tumor suppressor genes. When, because it is controlling the division or cell division and how the cell will grow and divide. And the example of some tumor suppressor genes, one of the most important one is P53 protein and the gene name is TP53. Another example is PRB retinoblastoma which will cause retinoblastoma protein. And I can give another example like P10, okay. These are some examples. There are many more, but these are some major examples of tumor suppressor genes. PRB is one of the first tumor suppressor genes which are identified earlier, which is okay. 
So now, as you know, the overall process of tumor suppressor genes, the functionality of tumor suppressor genes are divided in two different, uh, two or three different parts. The first thing is that tumor suppressor genes help the cell cycle to grow and it, it controls the cell cycle at different stages. Okay. So this, this protein, P53, it will be required, ret retinoblastoma protein. This is required for the cell to grow from one stage to the next stage. Like from G1 phase to the S phase, you need the presence of PRB. You need the presence of retinoblastoma protein there. And if there is no retinoblastoma protein, automatically the cell cannot go from G1 phase of the cell division to S phase of the cell division. So it is regulating the cell cycle. This is the first job. Now the second job is now let's say it is growing, the cell is growing. Now there are some signal coming from the oncogene. Some of the oncogenes are getting activated, some proto-oncogenes are activated into oncogenes. Now that will start the cell to proliferate. It's signaling so many different signaling pathways to cell to grow. Because let's say there is a problem with the growth factor receptor. The tyrosine kinase receptor that, that resides in the top of the cell receives the growth factor and, and signals inside that the cell have to grow. Now that is turned on, that signaling pathway is turned on for eternity. As a result of that, it is signaling the cell to grow and divide and divide throughout the time and the cell is dividing and start to form kind of mass of cells. Now in those conditions, when there is any problem, any sort of problems like mutations because you know the reason for converting proto-oncogenes into oncogene are mutations. So if there is any sort of mutation or DNA damage, it could be deletion of the genes or any sort of DNA damage of, of the gene. If there is any DNA damage or mutations are there, this tumor suppressor gene will halt the process of cell division. Okay. So, this tumor suppressor genes and gene products are present in every different checkpoints of cell cycle. They are present in the checkpoints of cell cycle and they are produced inside the cell all the time. For example, P53, this product, this is a protein, P53 protein, it is known as the cellular guardian of cell cycle because it, it regulates the complete process of cell cycle. So, inside a cell, P53 is being produced throughout the time almost constitutively. It regulates its own concentration inside the cell due to the by creating another protein known as MDM2. I'm not going to talk about how P53 exactly works here, but I'm going to tell you it is always present inside the cell, but it is in inactive form. But if there is any sort of DNA damage, any sort of damage or mutation signal present in the in the cell, there are some DNA damage response element, DNA damage response proteins there. Like kinase proteins, AKT proteins, ATM, these are the name of some proteins which are present uh, during the, they act as a DNA damage response protein. So if there is a DNA damage, those proteins will recognize it and signal P53, tell P53 that this is the time for you to be active. So P53 gets activated. So let me illustrate that a little bit here, that will be very helpful for you. So let's say here, this is a normal DNA. Due to any sort of uh, problems and radiation or something, the DNA damage is there. For example, this is the DNA damage. Now, as there is a DNA damage formed, there will be some proteins as I told you. Say ATM, is a, it's a DNA damage response protein. It will signal the P53 to become activated. Now the P53 is active. Now once P53 gets activated, it can do two different things. Now this P53 will decide either this damage to be repaired. Okay. So there are two options. First, I know whether it, uh, let me convert it, the arrow in the opposite direction. This is the active form for example. And it provides two signals. One is the repair signal that it will turn on so many different repair pathways like nucleotide excision repair, base excision repair, methyl mismatch repair, SOS 
error prone so there are different repair pathways that will be turned on by the activation of p53 okay it will try to first fix the damage so it just brings some uh, experts like nerve bar these are the pathways they will try to fix the damage now let's say they calculate the situation and they thought that no this damage is irreparable it cannot be fixed or there is no enough time for this damage to be fixed or even if dam this damage is so big even if we fix it will be a lot of resource wasted inside the cell at those conditions p53 is the guardian he will make the decision that no then we don't have to fix it if it's a big enough we don't have to fix it you simply kill that cell it will get rid of everything just get rid of everything and kill the cell and turn on apoptosis pathway or program cell death pathway okay so this is the job of p53 controlling everything inside the cell this is one example i am giving you as a as an example of tumor suppressor protein now this is how this whole process work if there is any sort of problem the tumor suppressor gene will come and rescue the cell from that because you know you may ask that if we kill the cell then what is the what is the mm, i mean uh, need for killing a cell the answer for that is that let's say there's a dna damage occurring now if we keep this cell this cell will not produce any proper proteins and factors it might i mean there are some resources present surrounding that cell which uh, which may be used by other cells and develop something more so it's not uh, worth it to keep that cell uh, alive so they will kill that cell to 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 limit that damage only up to that cell area so that in a sense is uh, tumor suppressor gene and tumor suppressor protein and the role of tumor suppressor protein in regulating uh, the cell division pathways and in regulating the development of cancer as well so that's it guys if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and definitely subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that thank you